You've heard the song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Today, I show you how. Let's get started. Thanks, Dal Strong, for sponsoring today's video. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and we've all been to holiday parties and heard the songs, but how often have you actually had some chestnuts roasted over an open fire? I started to think about this, and my 40 plus Christmases, I've never had that. So I'm gonna show you how to roast chestnuts over an open fire. There's a lot of different methods online if you look. Most of them involve uh, placing the chestnuts in a cast iron pan, but then after a few minutes, they want you to stir and tumble those chestnuts regularly. That got me thinking, We've got a Joe, we've got a Joe Tisserie and a Napoleon basket, which I think will do all the tumbling for us and help turn out some amazing chestnuts that we're gonna roast directly over the coals. Now we've got a lot of prep to do on our chestnuts, but before we do that, we wanna get some heat in our Joe so it's ready to go. The total cook time, once we're ready, is only 10 to 12 minutes. So this is gonna be very, very quick. So we wanna get some fire started in our Kamado Joe Classic 3. I'm gonna be using that today along with the Joe Tisserie accessory. If you don't have the Joe Tisserie to follow along, you can absolutely go back back to that cast iron pan method where you're going to build a bit of a ring on the bottom of your grid and place that cast iron pan either directly on the coals or on the firebox grate and get them really, really close to the coals. I'm gonna be aiming for about 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me reposition the camera. We'll grab some charcoal and fire it up. Okay, so we've got our charcoal banked all towards the back of our basket so that way they're not directly sitting under the rotisserie basket. So let's get our grill blazer grill gun fired up and light our coal. Now this will make some noise, but I will mention if you are getting a few sparks, a little trick I'll show you here. Let's get going. Is you can turn your volume up here to turn it down so you can hear me. You can turn your grill uh, blazer grill gun up to a kind of a medium to high level and just close the dome a little bit so that way we don't get any sparks coming out of the grill. So after a minute you can see then fast forward I was able to open the dome once that's that's once we get our initial combustion, we start to get some of those coals ashing over. We're no longer having to worry about any sparks. I know a few of you like me have been falling in love or your families have been falling in love with the flavor of Fogo, uh, but compared to some of the other ones I use, you do, you do get a few more sparks on combustion. So that little trick of just closing your dome and letting your torch run on cruise control to a medium to high heat helps mitigate any sparks flying out, particularly if you're cooking on a wooden deck like I used to. Not so concerned now as everything's granite and stone, but that's a quick little trip a trick how to manage some sparks during the combustion process. Let's close our dome and let that come up to temperature. So while we're waiting for our grill to come up to temperature, that's the perfect time to start to get to work on preparing our big bag of chestnuts here. Now there's not a lot of work that we need to do here, but we don't want to just throw them directly from the grocery store onto the grill. That's because despite how hard these feel, there's actually a fair bit of humidity and moisture in here. So as they start to cook, that steam will act a bit like a pressure cooker uh, and these will explode if we do absolutely nothing to them. At the same time, we don't want to overdo it and completely remove the casing as we do want that pressure cooking uh, benefit. So we are going to score these with an X. Let me bring you nice and close, show you how we're going to do that. And by the time we're done, our grill should be up to temperature. We're about 250 degrees right now. I want to wait till I see about 450 or pass the hand test before adjusting my vents start to dial it down. We'll grab our jotisserie, set it up and get these on for an actual chestnuts roasting over an open fire cook. So as these tend to move around, uh, since we want to cut the flat side, I've just got a pair of cut resistant gloves. They're not cut proof, but it'll just help reduce the risk of any injury of one of these rocks. So I'm going to use my Dalstrong Shogun filleting knife here. And what we want to do is score an X into each of these chestnuts. So we'll just do a bit of an X like that. That's exactly why we want the glove. And I don't know if that'll come through on camera or not, but you can see we've got an X pattern and that is more than enough to help the steam release so we don't get hopefully too many of these exploding. I'll take you fast forward while we prepare the rest of them.
Okay, so we've got all of our chestnuts scored. Hopefully you can see that coming through on the camera with a bit of an X pattern in them. So I think we're ready to go adjust the vents on our grill. Up in our Jotisserie ring, nice and centered. If you uh, find when you put your dome down and it's popping back up like this, you can loosen this back nut here and that will stop that. But I do find Pulling the jotisserie a little bit further forward usually helps that stay so it's not rising up and creating a really big air gap right here. So now that that's lined up, we got our motor. Drop this in just like so. Grab our basket, which goes together. Put it this way so I can not block the entire shot. So we'll just slide those into the two hooks. Pull back, flip, push that down so they're all locked into place, get our spit, slide that through, bring this over to the jotisserie, into position there. And then I leave these untied up because on the classic Joe, you can see the basket just fits. If I were to tighten that and then leave it in this position, as soon as it starts to spin here, I'll show you, it's going to hit the metal here and lift the whole jotisserie out of place. So since we don't want that, little trick is just to leave those undone so that if they do start to move uh, throughout the cook, that it's not going to end up lifting or jamming up your jotisserie. So that looks good. We've got some nice coal, some live fire going there for roasting our chestnuts. Let's close the dome and set a timer for about 10 minutes. We'll check on them, maybe give them another minute or two if they still need to soften up. Okay, our chestnuts have been roasting over that open fire for eight minutes. I'm aiming for between 10 and 12. So I think it's a good spot to come take a look. Let's take a peek together, move the camera nice and close and see how they're turning out. Okay, you can hear them tumbling along in here. Oh yeah, that's, so just those light scores making that X mark, you can already see them starting to open up nicely. So I think these are getting close, closer probably to about the 10 minute mark. So let me close the lid, give these a few more minutes and send it over to Dow Strong for sponsoring today's video. If you've been following my channel for a while, this will come as no surprise to you because you already know I am a huge fan of Dow Strong knives and they're the ones that I recommend to my own family, friends, or you guys when you ask. Now there are three reasons I love my Dow Strong knives. And first has to be the incredible craftsmanship and quality materials that go into these. Whether it's the first time you open the box and you're getting a, a look at it for the first time or it's years later, I'm absolutely blown away with the stunning beauty and craftsmanship that goes into these knives. Second is the fit and the finish and the handle. This knife, all these knives feel like an extension of my own arm and I have full confidence to tackle things maybe I've never even cooked before because the knife is gonna perform like an extension of my own body and not be something I need to worry about getting in the way. So whether I'm chopping, dicing, slicing, carving a brisket, you name it, I feel completely at home using any of my Dow Strong knives. And lastly, and maybe most important, the reason I feel fully comfortable recommending these is they come with a sort of no risk guarantee as well as a lifetime warranty. So if you ever have any sort of issues, Dow Strong stands by their product for the life of the product itself. So those are my top three reasons. There are plenty more to get into, but I'm gonna put a link down below to check out the complete lineup. I've happened to be a big fan of the Shogun series, but there are many more styles and knives to find one that matches your individual tastes and preferences. Thanks again to Dow Strong for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the action. Okay, so we are just coming up to the 11 minute mark now and these look awesome. So I think it is time to get them off so they don't continue to cook. I'm also gonna grab some finishing salt. So whether it's Florida Cell or Malden Smoke Salt, which I think I'm gonna go with today, that's gonna be a great complement to serving these fire roasted chestnuts. So let me grab some of that, bring it outside, get these off and rejoin you in a second for our taste test. All right, these look good. Now they're best served warm, so I don't wanna leave them out here in the cold too long so let's get these out of our basket so here's where you can see just those little score marks that you could hardly see earlier have completely opened up and I don't think we have any that have exploded so that's exactly what we want and why you want to do this scoring step so let me get one out of the package here it's actually still 
quite warm. I still might use my gloves to do that. And we'll get ready for our taste test. A little bit of smoked salt. Okay, so I've got my first one out prepared with a little bit of salt on it. Let's try. It's got like a warm nut butter taste to it. Mm, really good. Mm, I'm gonna get one more. A little sweet coming through. This is how you win the holidays. Now, these don't reheat really well, so I'm gonna get them inside, share them with some friends and family before they cool off and they fall out of that exact perfect temperature range. But this was in total uh, almost you know, just below a 12 minute cook. So outside of getting our grill up to temperature and doing some scoring, you can pull this off really quick when guests arrive. Or if you want to make it last a little bit longer, I won't tell them. I'll back you up. It's a really, really long cook and you need to be outside uh, away from the mall while you do that. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please let YouTube know and smash that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. And be sure to check out my member section where I go live with members monthly in order to answer any questions that might be on your mind in a bit more of a one-to-one -one setting versus these pre-recorded videos. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.